going on? How's everyone doing? Just shout out to you. Everybody else who's cool with the comment. Shepke! I didn't say. Eat your popcorn. <laughs> and your Coca Cola and relax. <laughs> anyway, tell Colin. I'm rich. Oh, what's going on? How's everyone doing? This is Colin. Hope you guys are having a great night. Got a special guest. Got a special guest tonight. Let's see if he wants to come up and say hi. You want to come up and say hi? Let's go. Hello there. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Judge King. Welcome How from my you? home to yours. I'm doing great, sir. How are you? I am doing awesome. It's, Thank you for asking. It is so good to put a face with a name. Cause all I see is your name. Uh, you see my name a lot on, a, on I, our I YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, you're welcome you a, anytime. Thank you. You've got a good, you've got a good community. You've got one of the best in the in the court business that, and they they are loyal to you. They just hang along. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love them. I played a video a few months ago. It's probably back in November, I think maybe October, November, where a few of them came to visit you and you were walking around and, and you know, what I, what I like to call, you were showing them off. Look at me. I'm going to show them off to all the other judges. I, 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 followed, I followed you yes, from I court think, to court. I think some of my colleagues got jealous. Probably. I mean, I would too, if I were them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you had, you had people come to visit you and you're like walking around, like I'm the coolest person here. Like, yeah, you were. Well, thank you. You, I think you, I am yeah, sometimes. You know, sometimes, like I had to put a suit on just to match your your style because I didn't want you out styling me on my own channel. So I put a suit on, and then look at you—you you still show up and you still look better. Than well, me. you look you look great. <laughs> Thanks. You look you look like a New York lawyer. New York lawyer. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. I'll take it. I'll take that. I'll take it. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, though? Are you doing well? I'm doing very good. It's Friday night. This week kind of drug for me. I was always a day ahead of myself, but I finally caught up to it. So, you know, I stay up all weekend just to make the weekend last longer. <laughs> I stay up all night. I really do. I believe it. You, I mean, you're, you're a judge and you have, out of all the courts I watch, you, you have the toughest docket. You, you really do. And it was sort of designed that way. It was designed for me to have the toughest docket because of the pandemic. And quite frankly, a lot of my colleagues just don't like doing the kind of cases that I do. Some of them really are kind of hard to stomach, particularly the sexual assault on children. Those cases are pretty tough to listen to at times, even more so than the homicides. I agree. I I mean, I, I have kids, and every time I see those cases, I can't watch them. I have to turn it off. I would much – this sounds mm. bad. Eh, but I would much rather watch a, a homicide trial than uh, anything to do with kids. And when I see that, I'm like, I can't watch this. I can't do it. And you sit there, you, you and you – go ahead. It's It's kind of fun for me because – Having been on both sides, the prosecution as well as the defense, I try to figure out where each side is going, you know, and sometimes I get attorneys that miss something. I try to fill in the gaps because at the end of the day, I want to make sure that justice is done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what you that that is your role. That's what you do. Uh, and you're really good at it. And. Yeah, well, how you. how exactly you I, I didn't need to tell that to you. Like you know you know you're good at what you do, and the entire chat knows you're good at what you do. But what what keeps your head level listening to all those tough cases that you do every day? I mean, <laughs> Probably how, a number how do you, of things. Yeah, you I mean you go home and how do you not think about I just heard this tough case and how does that not weigh on you? And you come in every day with a smile on your face. Again, I put my suit on to look as good as you because you walk in with a smile on your face, you're always looking good. 
you always have a, yeah how, how do you do that well i really love my job i love it more so than anything that i can think of you know i really love what i do and i get my kicks in making sure like i said that justice is done sometimes justice does not require that a defendant gets bound over sometimes it does most of the time it does but i put myself back in that arena of of an attorney of a prosecuting attorney sometimes as a defense attorney and i put myself in those guys shoes and i try to make sure that what's done needs to be done you know what balances me out though are my extracurricular activities i love to teach probably because i like to run my mouth and i have no short i have no shortage of stories that i tell my students but i like to teach and that's what i think i think i was a better attorney than i am a judge i thought i was a hell of a prosecuting attorney I had a pretty good record as a prosecuting attorney. I think I can only think of two cases that I lost in the seven years that I was in a prosecutor's office. And, and I'm still kind of pissed about that. But anyway, um, I enjoy convincing, I enjoy teaching. And the other thing that keeps me grounded is my family because I'm no big deal to them. My wife doesn't even pay much attention to what I do. My kids, uh, particularly my sons, I used to bring them to court with me when they were younger. And if the officer said, all rise back during the time when we were open from the beginning pre-pandemic, I, I recall my son being the only one still sitting down and everybody would look at him and laughing like, aren't you going to stay for, my, for your dad? It's like, it's just dad, you know? So they keep <laughs> me grounded. That's awesome. That's good. And I'm, I'm glad that, that you have that because... I, I have a tough time watching your docket every day. I'm, I don't know how you do it every day. So that's awesome that you have that. Uh, speaking of, so you're, you are a teacher and a few, this, I'm going to say a few weeks ago, I don't remember the exact day, maybe a little bit over a month ago, you had, had a bunch of your students in to do a mock trial. And that was the most fascinating thing that I've seen in a long time. Not only was it fascinating, mm -hmm. they did a really good job and they were your students. They, they were they, really good. They were. And not only were they good and they knew what their what their roles were in the court, but they executed great. And you said it perfectly mm -hmm. at the end, where you you sit in front of seasoned attorneys and they don't necessarily do a, a as good of a job as they did on that day. So that was that was a very big compliment. Hopefully, they uh, they took that as a as a compliment that you gave them because that was I hope that was so. really fun to watch. That was really fun to watch, and yeah. So that's kudos to you. Um, so where where do you teach at? Um, I looked this up, and I don't. So remember. currently, currently, I'm teaching at the University of Detroit Mercy School of Law, and I'm teaching at okay. Wayne All State right. University. Okay. All right. I'm glad I'm glad my uh, research didn't fail me. So Wayne State and Detroit Mercy, uh, that's cool. That's yes. cool. Uh, and you you did your undergrad at Michigan State. That's correct. Go green, go white. We won yesterday, by okay. the way. You did. You did. You did. <laughs> uh, I, I go Michigan State. I'm a Bearcat, so I am from Ohio. Don't hold that against me. I'm not a Buckeye. Oh, that's I'm a okay. Bearcat. So yeah, we don't we don't follow the whole Buckeye versus Michigan thing, but uh, you're Michigan State, so it doesn't really matter to either one of us. So it's good. We're gonna get no, it doesn't. <laughs> I will say, I will say that you taking D'Antonio away from us, I don't know, twenty years ago, it still hurts. It still hurts. Oh, is that where he came from? Yeah, he came from Cincinnati. I didn't know that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying thank well, you. Well, LSU it's stole our coach, Nick Saban. Yeah, yeah. LSU actually yeah, he went on stole that. one of our coaches, too. Uh, so go, go ahead. Go ahead. Then he went on to Alabama, and, mm -hmm. you know, the rest is history. 
Yeah, we lost. Uh, came like oh, God's name escaped me. He went LSU didn't steal him. He went to Notre Dame, and then he went to LSU. Football coach, I can't hmm. remember his name. Uh, Weiss, maybe. This we're talking back in early two thousands. I don't remember. I don't. I remember the old guy that yeah. that the Irish had. If that's him. No, I don't not, remember his well, name though. It, it, we're just yeah. It was within the last couple of years that he was Irish. Anyways, let's let's move on. Let's move on because okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be called out in my comment section because I didn't know the name of that <laughs> coach and I can't say I'm a UC fan and forget you know history. Um, let's see, so. We just skipped like half of my questions already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go. I'm open. I just opened up my Take script. Take your time. Like, no pressure. I'm okay. No, no, I got. I do have pressure. All right. So, how do you feel about Zoom Court? Do you like Zoom Court? Are you a fan of it? Do you want it to continue, or would you rather go back to all in person? It's fascinating to me that we have people from all over the world that are viewing what we're doing here in Detroit. I don't mind it at all. I'm not sure what my colleagues don't like about it because many of them have abandoned it, but I like it, you know, but there are some drawbacks, particularly as it, not YouTube, but particularly as it relates to Zoom with the attorneys. I mean, some attorneys I think really take advantage of the situation and may not dress appropriately or their tardiness or just plain being lazy. You know, their clients show up and they're not there. You know, that's, I understand that it's convenient. And I understand and I appreciate that because attorneys have to be in a lot of different places at the same time, which is impossible. And then some judges aren't very lenient. I don't have an issue with that. The only issue I have is when I have to stop what we're doing to hunt you down to figure out where you are because you haven't called the court to let me know that you're in another courtroom. That I have an issue with. And so I get on the attorneys a little bit about that. But aside from that, you know, I have no problem with YouTube at all. In fact, I enjoy it. I enjoy reading you guys' comments um, when I have some downtime. The thing is, it's gotten so big and there's so many people that are commenting, it's kind of hard to keep up with the comments. Yeah. Because uh, you guys keep me on my toes, too, because I have to remember to. that people are watching. <laughs> people are watching. We got, we got to make sure, you know, that you look good. And when your robe starts slipping off your shoulder, we got to let you know. Hey, well, it's hot. It's, it's hot as it's hot as <laughs> H-E, H-E hockey sticks, up, double hockey sticks in you, there. It is very, very you, warm you, in my courtroom. And sometimes you'll hear the fans blowing in the courtroom because it's so warm in there. So we've been kind of lucky thus far, but it's about to warm up outside and it takes us a minute to adjust the temperature in the courtroom. So you're gonna see me coming out that robe a little more. And I don't know if, if I've told you guys this, but the robe that I'm wearing right now has a broken zipper. <laughs> that explains a lot, that explains so, a lot. So I can't even zip it, yeah. right. You're like sitting there like this, like I just thought that I was like part of your swag. Like I'm just, I'm just that cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna hang out. No, Wait, no. Gonna hang out. I got, I got to listen to murders no. all day. Do not call me out on me having my robe over my shoulder. Uh, real quick, no. uh, Judge Slavin is in the house. Hello, Judge Slavin. Thank you for hanging out. He says hi to you too. I don't know if you can see the chat that I just pulled up, but uh, oh hey, Judge, Judge how you doing, sir? I think I just seen Judge Slavin about a week ago at at Fishbones. How you doing, Judge? <laughs> Um, speaking of the robe, I have a question about the robe because you said this the other day, when I say the other day, this, when I, my girlfriend yells at, not yells, she makes fun of me all the time and says, I say the other day, it couldn't mean anything from 10 minutes ago to six months ago, but you, you had a case where you didn't have your robe. I think you said you left it in your chambers. I don't remember. And you said, is it okay with you guys if I do this case without my robe? Now, I always thought the robe was just a symbol. Is that something that, you know, are there some weird rules that we don't know about that you have to have that on? It is a weird rule. So far as I know, we are supposed to have our robes on when conducting business on the bench. 
And my okay. <laughs> when I was in my other courtroom, courtroom 538, my chambers was right across the hall from the courtroom. So it wasn't a big deal for me to jump off the bench, run into my chambers and grab whatever. Now I have my courtroom is on the second floor and my chambers is still on the fifth floor. So it takes me a minute to get to the fifth floor and come back. So that's why I decided to go ahead and do that. But then as soon as I finished that case, I had to go grab my robe because I don't want any because you never know who's watching. There are a heck of a lot of people watching me. I think today we had 180 something people. I don't know who those 180 something people are, but it can be someone from judicial tenure. It could be someone from the state court administrator's office. It could be our chief judge, anybody, and everybody watches us. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And you were covering your grounds by saying, hey, do you mind if I do this? And I'm going to run. You were. You were very polite about it. But I, that's why I said, like, I just I thought it was just a symbol. I didn't know that you actually had to have it on. Yeah, we, okay. we are supposed to have them on. Um, all right. Next question. Sovereign citizens. If I don't ask you about sovereign citizens, I'm going to get a lot of feedback. I have to ask you. I have to. I know. I'm getting tired of them, too. And I, I watch court <laughs> much as you are hanging out on the bench. I, I'm always jumping through courts, and I'm getting tired of them, too. My question. I'm not going to ask you to find them. Do you think because of all the courts on YouTube that that movement is growing or is it just the same amount and just bad information? So you see the same amount. I know you don't see a lot of them. They don't usually use that, you know, whatever they, whatever their, whatever their script is, they don't use it in front of you because you deal with a lot of heavier cases, but as a judge, do you think that the movement is growing because of YouTube? I don't think it's growing because of YouTube. I think they've been around all along. They're just getting more exposure. Pe more people are seeing them now. You know, people always look for a way to get out of something. You know, and right. they, like you said, they follow a script, and they don't deviate from that script. I don't care what you say to them, and the script that they follow, I don't even understand. They might as well be talking French to me because what the heck are you talking about? And then I think the last one I had before me, he told me that I was his name. I said, no, sir, I'm Kenneth King. <laughs> that, that was pretty oh, funny. I remember. I remember it. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you details about that because I know you can't talk about it, but that was a good one. It's like, you're you're me. And I'm like, no, I'm Kenneth King. I am Judge Kenneth King, and I am putting you on mute. It was great. It was great. <laughs> yeah. So you're right, though. Luckily, I don't come in contact with them a lot anymore. Um, but if I can get them to budge off that script, then I'm doing something. Yeah, they don't know how to. They don't know how to answer if you get them to budge just a little bit. You had when you covered for Judge Supreme a month ago. Okay. You had one, and you said when you were leaving the bench. I'm going to go back to my courtroom. I've got a homicide trial where it's easy. I don't I don't need this anymore. <laughs> it was good. It was a good comment. That was a rough day covering for Judge Sabri. I had a defendant that wanted to represent himself, and he uh -huh. actually didn't do too bad of a job. But um, then I had a defendant that cursed me out on the way out of the courtroom. I said, wait a minute. Let me go back to my docket where it's nice and safe. Yep. <laughs> that, was, that was the comment. I'm going to go back to my doc or it's nice and safe. I'm going to go handle, handle homicides. You guys can have fun with these people. No, it was funny. Yeah. It was funny. All right. Segue into the next one. I already, I had it in my mind. Yep. See, you say no pressure and I'm, I'm pressuring myself. <laughs> Relax. Uh, Take your time. We're family. We are family. You are. But yeah, you're, you're new to the channel and I want to keep everybody happy. There's almost 350 people here watching. So. Yeah, it's a little nervous. Oh wow. Yeah. You're popular. I don't have I don't have 300 people watching me. Uh you I you, may get a thousand or two thousand or three thousand views afterwards, but at a time it's more like around 180. It may go a little higher than that on homicide days. You you get the but views you're, you're big day. stuff. Well, see, but I don't I don't go on for seven hours. If I went on for seven hours, if you were on here for seven hours and we we're talking about this people throughout the day 
but yeah, you you get that many people during the day. You do because every time I jump in, there's a diff- there's a bunch of different people in there. So you, you get the same amount of people. I'm just I'm just a smaller brain, so not a good sample for uh, for that statistic. Anyways, um, now see, we just took me off it. Where did my question go? Okay. Here's another question. This is actually a question I asked Judge Slavin, and I loved his answer to it. And so I'm going to ask you the same question. As a YouTube community, and we watch Court a lot, as you know, a lot of the same people that watch you are in this are in the chat right now. We criticize, not criticize, criticize is the right word, but we often question why judges don't hold people in contempt more often where do you balance holding someone in contempt or just giving them a warning i can expand a little bit more well, on that if you need to i think in large part it has to, more so to do with who it is who the agree, egregious person is if it's an attorney, for me to hold an attorney in, in contempt of court, it's going to do a lot of damage to that attorney. Because if I hold an attorney. I don't necessarily want to do that. And I haven't had that kind of issue arise too often. Maybe in the last couple of years, I've had two. I had one attorney that I had to actually put in lockup. And then I called his supervisor and said, hey, you listen, you might want to come over here and talk to this guy before I hold him in contempt of court. I don't want to do that. Then I had a young lady who was totally dis- out, of, out of order. And I didn't want to necessarily do that to her either. There were a group of attorneys that came to her and talked some sense into her and she came back and apologized. But when we're talking about defendants and or citizens. Now, there's certain things that are pet peeves of mine, some places that would be witness intimidation and fighting down at the court. I have a zero tolerance for that whatsoever. There will be none of that because I don't like the image that it portrays. I don't like the image that it leaves with the court. A lot of people come down to the court, that's their first time in the court. And I hate for them to be left with that impression that this place is a zoo, or this is dangerous, or we won't be protected, or I'm scared, I'm in fear. And someone besides the judge is in control of what's going on down here. I want to portray the image at all times that I am the one in control and that you're totally safe. No one is going to harm you here. Uh. So if I have to use my contempt powers to get that message across, particularly if someone's fighting. And I try to be the same across the board for everyone. If you're fighting, count on going to jail, particularly if you started the fight. I saw you jump off the bench. And when you're talking about the fight, I don't want to go into details about that. I I don't want to question you about that. I just want to make one comment. You jumped off the bench quicker than your security guards ran into the hallway. And you didn't take your robe off. It was flapping behind you like a cape. And you ran into the hallway. Like, that was, I was impressed by that. You were like the security, I'm not saying the security guards and the the bailiffs didn't do, like, they ran out there, but you were like, boom. You wanted to see what was going on. Well, I wanted to see what was going on. A couple of reasons why. One is I'm nosy. The (laughs) other is that, it saves me the trouble of appointing attorneys and all that kind of stuff, having a contempt hearing. If something happens before me while I'm in session on the bench, if I see it for myself, I can hold that person in contempt of court without having a hearing and so forth. So I'm going to go out there and see for myself what's going on. Because sure, sure enough, when we brought the young lady in, she said, that wasn't me. And I know darn well it was you because I saw you with my own eyes. So you can save that crap. And she spent the night in jail. She may have not been the person who initiated it. But from what I saw, she was just as wrong as anyone else that was out there. 
And that was on my, off my own yeah. observation. I was impressed. I was impressed. You uh, you handled that very well. I don't. Yeah, Thank this you. is. I say this every day. I could never be a judge or a lawyer, even though I love court. I love watching the whole legal system. I love doing it. It's why I have the channel that I do. But I'm. I couldn't be impartial. I couldn't do that. Mm. So yeah. We have you have you are in that position for a reason. So yeah, I applaud you for that. Um all right, let's go down. Let's go down. Okay. Um so what are your career goals? You're a judge, all right? So did you always think was your was your plan to always be a judge? Let's start let's start a little bit before my last question. So you went to law school you I, I saw you were you started a private practice for a few years then you became a prosecutor was your goal to be a judge or did it just kind of happen i can't hear you oh you muted yourself here i can unmute you i got you oh I go. said I wanted to be a judge ever since I was 14 years old. Can you hear me now? I can't. I can't. All right. There we go. So your plan was to be a judge. So that's cool. Yeah. That's I cool. wanted to be a judge ever since, ever since I was 14 years old. And the reason and how that happened is I was in my high school English class and the English teacher was asking each student what they wanted to do when they grew up. And so my dad had always, always told me that I wanted to be an engineer because I was good in math and science. I said, okay. So I rolled with that. I said, sure, I'm going to be an engineer. And she made light of that. She said, well, what kind of engineer are you going to be? Are you going to drive a train or what? And it embarrassed me because I didn't know because dad never told me what kind of engineer. I never considered how many different kinds of engineers there are. So she gave me a college course book of all places to the University of Michigan. And I went through the college courses and I did some soul searching and I did some praying as to what it is that I think I wanted to do. Now, keep in mind, this is a 14 year old kid trying to determine what they wanna do. So I knew that I wanted to be in charge. I, know, I knew that I liked to debate. I knew I liked to persuade people. I was a people person always. I've always been a people person. And so I came up with, I wanted to go into law. Now, keeping in mind, this is the mind of a 14 year old who didn't have much of a sense of the world outside of television. And what do we see most often on television? Crime shows, you know? And so I thought, that to go into law, you had to go into criminal law. Now, I didn't know at the time that I wanted to be a prosecuting attorney, which turned out to be the bit, one of the best moves I've ever made. So I researched as to what it would take to be a lawyer. And I saw that you had to graduate from high school. You had to go to a four-year institution. You had to graduate from the four-year institution, four institution and then go to law school graduate from law school and then pass the bar exam. So I said, okay, so what is going to best prepare me to be a lawyer, a criminal lawyer? That's how I chose my, my major as criminal justice. So then I looked to see who had the best criminal justice program and Michigan State had one of the best criminal justice programs in the country and it wasn't far from home. And I'm an only child, didn't wanna to go too far away from mom and dad. So I said, Michigan State, that's my bet. I didn't even apply to any other college. Michigan State was it. And I almost didn't apply there. I was class president of my class. My counselor came to me and she said, well, what colleges have you applied to? I said, none. She said, come here, boy. And she threw me a application to Michigan State. And she said, I can get you in, fill that out. I filled it out and then I got my acceptance letter. And when I went to Michigan State, when I graduated from there, then I started, it was time to get serious because 
it was scary because I was graduating and I knew what I wanted to do. I just had to get there. So I had to take the LSAT and apply to law schools and so forth. So I applied to the University of Michigan. They turned me down. I applied to Wayne State University. They turned me down. I I applied to Detroit College of Law, which wasn't at Michigan State at the time. They accepted me and I applied to the University of Detroit Mercy School of Law and they accepted me. And of the two, I thought that U of D Mercy had the best of the reputations for law school. So that's how I chose the law school that I would go into. Once in law school, I felt like I had a distinct disadvantage because I was the first person in my family to go to college and graduate, number one. And number two, I didn't know anybody that was involved in law, anybody that I could really talk to about anything. A lot of my peers in law school had family members that were lawyers and judges and so forth. So I felt like I was learning everything from the ground up and from scratch. And so I felt like I was behind. I had no legal experience. They were interning for their moms and dads and uncles. So they had legal jobs. I was working in the factory. I would work in a factory during the summer before law school. And I can and it paid well. And that was my link to the UAW because my dad was a UAW official at the time. And I got in, when I got to law school, I said, I have to do something because a weakness that I have is that I have no legal experience. So I actually volunteered my, my time at the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. I worked midnights at what was called Rouge Steel at the time. I worked midnights there. And during the day, I would come and volunteer at the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. And that was to get my feet wet to get some legal experience that I could actually put on a resume and to meet people during that tenure in the prosecutor's office. And I was tired as I don't know what, because I would get off work at seven in the morning and I would be in the prosecutor's office at nine and I would stay till four. And then I would go home, grab a couple hours of sleep and get ready to go to work again. And I met some people while I was there interning at the prosecutor's office. I exposed myself to appellate briefs because I was working in the appeals division. I met one of the best prosecutors that's still in the prosecutor's office and Lisa Lindsay. I also, who had me do some work for her. I met Kim Worthy who actually introduced herself to me um, during the time that she was doing the butts and nevers trial. And that was fascinating because that was the first time I met an attorney, an African-American attorney that was a prosecutor and who was doing this huge high publicity case. And so that inspired me to look in the direction of the prosecutor's office. So once I graduated, I looked to the prosecutor's office and they weren't hiring at the time. I took a job with a law firm called Bell and Gardner PC. And I worked there for about eight or nine months. When I left there, I went into private practice for a short period of time. And then I got a call from the prosecutor's office that were recruiting minorities at the time. And they asked me if I wanted to come there. And I said, well, sure, how much are you paying? And at the time, I think it was only like $42,000 a year. I said, oh my God, that's not even a client. I'm going to starve. But at the same time, I had a young family and I took some value in the benefits that they offered. So I said, "Okay, I'll give it a try. And the other reason was that I was told that that was the quickest avenue to the bench that most of your judges were former prosecuting attorneys. So I said, well, that's the ticket. That's what I'm going to do. So when I got in the prosecutor's office, Initially, I wasn't very excited about it because they put me on a docket that was just doing gun and drug cases, and I didn't get any satisfaction out of doing those cases. But then I did a rotation through the homicide unit, and I fell in love. I said, oh, my God, this is it. The stakes are high. I'm facing the very best of attorneys, 
and I have families that are looking to me to give them some closure as to what they've lost. And to boot, those cases typically had some media attention to them too. So my popularity was gaining as well. So I really enjoyed that stint in the prosecutor's office and I kind of mastered the art of selecting a jury because your cases are won and lost in jury selection. So I paid very close attention to the prospective jurors as they were seated. In fact, I remember a juror telling me or asking me, Mr. King, can I ask you a question? I said, sure, what? They said, why are you looking at us like that? And it dawned on me that I was looking at them um, rather intently because I was studying them. I wanted to know where they were from. I wanted to know what they did for a living, what their spouse did for a living, because I believe in socialization. That It's not 100% proof positive, but we are a product of our environment. So if you come from a conservative community, chances are you think conservative as well. And so if I had a police officer case where the police officers were my main witnesses, then I like to have jurors that were from Livonia, Dearborn, and places that I thought loved their police officers. I steered away from jurors that may have been from Highland Park or Detroit, who the African-American jurors may have had negative experiences with police officers. And I've had them myself. You know, I've probably been pulled over by every downriver community police officer that there is, sometimes justified, sometimes not justified. I think I went on and on and on. Go ahead. Next you're the question. Guest. No, you're the guest. I want you to talk. I want you to go on and on and on. You know why? Because that means I, I don't have to look at the next question for a long time and I can <laughs> comment on what you're saying. So it helps me when you go on and on and on. So if you want to talk, go ahead. This is you're the guest. I talk all night. My, my community knows so, I, I don't stop talking either. So the thing about being in the prosecutor's office during the seven years I was there, I had so much fun and the money actually caught up because that money caught up to me to the point to where I started at 42,000. When I left there, I was making 110. Good for you. And and it was a it was a pretty good gig. I learned a lot, a heck of a lot in the prosecutor's office. The support system that I had there was unmatched because we had people who had been there for 30, 40 years, you know, unlimited resources as far as the knowledge that, that they were able to, to give me, the, ex, the experience that they were able to instill or give to me that they had, you know, it was really, really a good move that I made there. Everything that I did prior to becoming judge prepared me for what I'm doing now. Even the civil practice I did, because when I first became a judge in 36th District Court, which was in 2006, I wasn't just doing the criminal docket. They had us doing landlord tenant. We did traffic. We did the civil docket. We rotated every two weeks to a different docket. And everything that I did up until that point prepared me for that because I had experience in all of those areas. So they really made me well-rounded. And then the prosecutor's office, um, became my focal point. That became my point of expertise because I liked it so much. You know, I was a homicide prosecutor. Most of the time that I was in the prosecutor's office, I was a special assignment prosecutor where I didn't do just homicides, but I did high publicity cases or cases that were important to the prosecutor at the time. And so I enjoyed doing those. I got it. I got it question you said that so you're rotated out every two weeks so you, when you first became a judge in 2006 the defendants that were you know going through their cases they, they could pot potentially have a different judge for their pcc their prelim and then their trial so when i first became a judge we didn't have pccs at that time we went from arraignment straight to the preliminary exam. Okay. And then right to and trial. And the PCCs was something that came about 
probably maybe a good five or six years into into the office when we when we start having to do PCCs. And I didn't like the idea at first. I'm like, you're just giving us an extra, an extra court date. But I like it because it gives me some control as to how I set my calendar. So if I'm going to plan a vacation, I'm not going to set a lot of cases during the time that I'm going to be away. That makes sense. But um, but you're, you're absolutely correct. And when I became chief judge in 36 district court, I did away with that two week rotation because there was no accountability there. People were just kicking the can down the road and you couldn't attach any case to our numbers. Like, oh, Judge King has been ho holding on to this case for three months. What is going on? There was no accountability because cases would be, just routinely get adjourned over and over and over again. So. I broke us up into divisions. I created a civil division and a criminal division. The criminal division consisted of criminal exams, misdemeanors, and traffic. And then we still did a rotation, but we did a rotation within that division. The civil division consisted of civil, landlord, tenant, and small claims. And they did a rotation as well. But it's because I the concern was we didn't want anyone to get burnt out on any particular docket. If you left me on traffic, I would probably commit suicide because it that. is so <laughs> mundane. It is so mundane and it's so boring to me that at times I had to do things to keep my own interests. Like I used to play what I, I termed the key game because I would get a defendant who had 60 something tickets and I would have to read those 60 something tickets into the record that irritated the heck out of me, right? And I'll call that defendant's name and the defendant is sitting in the stands and I hear keys jingling and there's no one else sitting next to him. I'm like, you know what? He probably drove here again and he still doesn't have a license. So I would take a plea and I say, so by the way, sir, how did you get here today? And then I would get the blank stare. How did I get here today? Yes, sir. I think you heard me. How did you get here today? Oh, uh, my friend drove me. I said, oh, OK, where's your friend? Let, let's have your friend step in. Your friend have a valid driver's license. Sometimes I would get the I caught the bus. Oh, really? OK, so how are you getting back home? I'm catching the bus. OK, and you have a key to your home? Yes, sir. May I see your keys, please? And how do most of us carry our keys all on one ring, including the car keys, right? So I get the key ring and I see these car keys. I said, sir, you don't have a valid driver's license, do you? No, I don't. Well, what are these car keys here? Oh, I don't drive that car anymore. I don't even have that car. Oh, so you have no use for these keys. Let me take them off your hands. And I would take <laughs> the keys off the key ring and I would throw them in the trash. I would do stuff like that to amuse myself sometimes, but I could not stand the traffic docket. That was my least favorite docket. That and probably landlord tenant because I took no joy in kicking people out of their homes. But understanding okay. the retention of the pay the You're going out a little bit. Okay, I think I lost you again. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear okay. you now. I can, but yeah, you you were yeah. you were quiet for there. You were quiet for about ten seconds. Yeah, somebody called. I think that was my dad I, called. I, I figured your screen started bouncing up and down. I was like, his phone's vibrating. I think someone's calling him. <laughs> uh, the last Sorry thing I heard you that. say is you take no joy. No, you're good. You take no joy in kicking people out. Yeah, uh, landlord tenant cases are sometimes entertaining to watch, but they're often very sad to watch. So I understand what you're yes. saying. About. Uh, tra traffic court's fun to watch. I love watching Judge Perkins and how he deals with with people. And Judge yeah, Perkins is time, great. He is. Judge Perkins Judge is absolutely is great. great. In fact, I'm supposed to be his mentor. So <laughs> he, he does a great job, though. And he was a very good attorney as well. I didn't see I didn't didn't see him as an attorney. I've only started I've only been watching court for about two years. So a lot of the names. Well, the saying, interesting thing about Judge Perkins is Judge Perkins was an attorney with his brother, Todd Perkins, 
-hmm. And then, but he also worked, he had a supervisory position with Ford Motor Company. And he took some time off from the practice of law to go back. And because I think he was a, a skills tradesman for Ford Motor. And he probably paid, made more money in that than he did practicing law at the time. So he stepped away for a moment. And then the next thing I know, he was appointed judge. <laughs> and, and handling traffic cases. Like and doing very well at it. He's good at it. He's good at it. And he has fun. He has fun. He, He's, he laughs on the bench every day. And that's what I like to watch. I like to watch. Like, you do the same thing. In between cases. Well, you know, he has. Too. Yeah. He has the attitude that we're not trying to hurt or penalize people. He his game his aim is to help as many people as he can. We want people to get their driver's license because we know that that is a key component in getting you back on track, in getting employment, and to stop getting pulled over by the police and going going to jail and getting your car seized and all those kinds of things. Yeah, and and he does like I, like we both said he does a very good job at it, and I. I cover I cover Judge Perkins a lot. I, I love watching Judge Perkins. Um, I also had another follow, -up, but you talk a lot, and I think I lost my follow up question. That was a joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, we were talking. Yeah, I I lost it. I lost it. Doesn't matter. Um, how much more time you got? You want to have much time you need. However wanna, much time you, you need, but understand that Purdue is on. You can you can go watch your Purdue. I I could care less. About no, no, so you can they're not playing Purdue anybody. Watch. They have they they're playing a sixteen seed, so it, it's not even a game. This guy is like eight feet tall. Who's going to stop him? Again, I'm a Bearcats fan. We we were lucky to make the <laughs> the, the 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 not a tournament. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're yeah. Uh, I still watch, but I don't really care as much. I it was a, a couple of years ago. I stopped. I used to root for a bunch of different teams, and I used to pay attention, but I don't have time for that anymore. I so root. When the I root for all the Big Ten teams, even Michigan, even Ohio State, even Ohio State. Absolutely, all the I Big root, Ten teams, even the ones I hate. I will root for them too when they're not playing a big 10 team but if they are i don't i, ha I don't have a dog in the fight I, i'll just watch it but yeah i'm the same way I'll, okay. I'll root for big 10 over the other over the other divisions I, I grew up a uh i'm from illinois so i'm actually an illinois fan from from my dad oh but okay I, I graduated from uc but illinois is never we we have a good team once every 20 years so they have a decent team now they won yesterday too they did i know i'm aware <laughs> yeah. i'm trying yeah yeah. Yeah. They made the national championship back, I don't know, 20 years ago and got swatted by North Carolina. And I still haven't let that down. <laughs> oh yeah. I remember that. I'm a, I'm a Bengals fan, a Bearcats fan and an Illinois fan. So I've never seen a Super Bowl or a national championship. So I don't know what it feels We're like. We're going to make you a Lions fan. I, you know what? I, I am a, I'm a closet Lions fan. I really am. I was really hoping. Okay. They would that they were going to do well this year. Um, the Lions are because I'm because I'm a Bengals fan. We we experienced the exact same thing. So mm -hmm. bad for so long. Well, at least you and guys have been to a Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Joe Montana beat us twice, and yeah, and then Stafford beat us a couple of years ago. But you know, we might make it back. Who knows? We lost too many people this year. I don't think. I, I think the Bengals are are going to be average for the next year or two while they're replacing the money that they just lost. Anyways. Okay. My, uh, yeah. Do you want to watch some court? You want to react to some court with us? Or do you want to, you want to call it a night? That, we can do that. Fun. Sure. We can do that. Let's put up some court. You know, there, there Let's is, there court. is one thing. Fun. There is one thing before we watch court. There's one thing that I want to tell people. I want to tell all your viewers that watch me is that unfortunately I must have very big eyelids because when I'm looking down, whether I'm writing or I'm looking <laughs> at the calendar on my phone, people think I'm asleep and I am not asleep. 
My eyes are not closed. I'm looking down here. I'm going to show you case in point. I'm looking down. Do my eyes look closed? They do. Yeah, they do. They're not. I'm looking down. It's it's just. So I just want to clear that, that misconception up. Just bring your huh? camera up. Just bring your camera up. Just, just raise your camera and you'll be fine. No, I or probably look, have to no, put my to camera look. down. Yeah, you need to lower your camera. That's what you need to do. Yeah, yeah I probably that, need to lower it because up, it makes my eyes look like they're closed and they're not. I yeah. just have big eyelids. Yeah. Just, just start looking in the camera. That offends, that offends me, though, when people tell me I'm asleep. The judge is asleep. I see that every every now and then so, to some of our newcomers. No, the judge is not asleep, damn it. He, he's, yeah, he's been, I'm no, sorry to okay. cuss on your show. No, you're fine. You're fine. Who who thinks you're asleep like this? I don't I don't know who would think you're asleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah, I'm glad you laughed at that. Uh, before we before we get into court videos, uh, I do want to read off some of these questions, or they're super chats, but some might be questions. Um, Fozzy, Heather hacked. <laughs> so these are just super chats. So the community can send you know can highlight messages by by um, sending, like, you know, so this one's $2. So Fozzie wanted to say, Heather hack Colin, don't tell him. Heather's my girlfriend. It's a it's an inside joke. So I'm just going to read some of these <laughs> off real quick. I'm going to read some of these off real quick. Uh, Steve Avery became a new member. Thank you so much, Steve Avery. Thank you, Fozzie, also. France, the country of France, donated 10 memberships. Thank you so much. Country of France. I'm, it's not the country of France. She's awesome. Thank you so much. CRD loves tea. Another 10 gifted memberships. Thank you, CRD loves tea. Debbie Baker. Debbie, I didn't see you jump in. I, I have not been paying attention to the chat. Uh, Debbie's an attorney. She's awesome. She's in D.C., but uh, she's a big fan of yours. We, we've talked about you before. So thank you, Debbie. For oh, that. okay. Kathy Berry, five, five gifted memberships. Thank you so much. Debbie again for five more gifted memberships. Coffee mom. What does that mean when you have gifted memberships? So on YouTube, you you can when when you monetize your channel, you can you create memberships. So the memberships are a way where you're kind of like I mean you're a member of the channel. So every Monday I will do a membership video, a members only video. So anyone who has a membership can watch it. So it's just us hanging out and it's not, it's, you know, I don't have to abide by the YouTube rules so you can cuss as much as you want. It's, it's just kind of like a, a, li a little <laughs> okay. hangout area, but yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can get a membership and hang out with us. Go ahead. It's 99 cents. It's not going to cost you a lot. So yeah, come hang out with All us right. on this Monday night. Uh, Coffee mom. They, oh, so the gifted memberships are, you can also give people memberships. So the gifting memberships, you can either just buy a membership yourself or you can gift them to other people. So that's what this is. Uh, gotcha. Coffee, Mom, Coffee Mom has been a member for two months. Thank you so much. Debbie Baker, here's to Admiralty Law. She must have said this when I asked you about soft sets. Admiralty Law. It's your favorite. That's your favorite practice, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Jedi, thanks for coming, Judge King. We need a ruling on your grilled cheese preferences. Oh, okay. Do you, do you enjoy a grilled cheese sandwich? No. I like meat. There has so, to be yeah. some meat with my cheese. That's fine. Just grilled That's cheese? Fine. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, say a hot, a, a hot ham and cheese. What What is your meat of choice inside of a grilled cheese if you're going to do it? Bacon, ham, well, well, salami? I don't do pork anymore. I don't do pork and I don't do red meat, so that leaves me with chicken and turkey. Uh, those don't make a really great grilled cheese. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you're you're kind of stuck on that one. But there's been there's been a big debate in my community: mayo versus butter on a grilled cheese. So when, you, when you're toasting the bread, but yeah, see, see, everyone, Judge Slavin butter. said butter, Judge King said butter. I'm just saying. But uh, I think butter is a choice. You weirdos out there Not saying mayo. mayo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even need to explain it to you. Not mayo. That's what he said. Not mayo. I'm going to clip that. Not mm -hmm. mayo, Judge King says. Judge King, thank you for coming on. Jedi is trying to trick you. 
but we know that Jedi mind tricks don't work on you, girl. Too preferences. Okay. So another, another. <laughs> like I said, th there, this is going to come up a lot because this has been a big debate over the last couple of weeks. Uh, Heather, my beautiful girlfriend, we can listen to you talk all night, Your Honor. And she called you Your Honor. Oh, thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. I see spin. How has your method for dealing with soft sets evolved? How has it evolved? I'm not sure if it's evolved very much. They still irritate the heck out of me. And <laughs> I let them, I let them say their say, but then I try to make sense out of the senseless, which is going down a dark road, you know, with no ending. Because no matter how many questions I shoot at them and try to get them to talk English to me, they just don't. And Your point earlier was great when you said if you knock them off their script just a little bit, they can't recover. And that's when they just kind of stop. So I think that's yeah. a great tactic. Just yeah. knock them and off so their in, script. In doing so, in doing so, I have to listen to what they're saying. And it's like, okay, well, explain to me what that means. And they're not able to explain it because it's the script they're reading from. They don't even know what it means, what they're saying. So I they're the not able to explain it to me either. I am the beneficiary of the all caps name. Uh, you know me as Colin, but I'm here by special appearance under duress. Just so, just so we're aware, just so everyone's aware. And so then I'll ask you, who's who's forcing you to do anything, sir? Uh, I got the summons to court. It says I had to come here. I was forced to come here. You this do under duress. You do. So you don't want to be here. No, I don't. Okay, I'd so rather, you're here. I'd you're, be here making video game, making video games, making. That, that's every video games. everyone charged with the crime can say that, sir. But here you are. So yeah. now we have to deal with it because you've been charged with the crime. But I need you to prove jurisdiction. I need you to prove jurisdiction. Um, you don't have jurisdiction over me. Is this criminal law or admiralty law? This is criminal law, sir. You charge. You're charged with the crime. The statute you're crime. You're charged with is. MCL 750 point blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, where's the victim? I didn't hurt anybody. I didn't injure anybody. There's no victim here. I have the right to face my accuser, and you can't say the state. You do. That time, that time will come. <laughs> that time will come. We're going to get there. Trust me, we're going to get there. All right. All right, that's about Unless all it's a domestic now. violence like, case. Like, <laughs> yeah. Unless it's a domestic violence case, you're going to face your victim. <laughs> domestic that, violence cases they just don't go that's as much as i can go i, I can't keep this straight up i i hey, you did pretty good fun. though i wish i knew more about the script. i i, I watched way too much <laughs> that, that is not a compliment to say I did that is not a compliment. all right this is great colin awesome job thank you sparkle foods thank you uh stacy armstrong thank you colin judge king for this interview judge king you run you run courts in a suit <laughs> Good swag. Are you in a fraternity? Just just curious. A fraternity. Yes, I am. Phi Beta Sigma Incorporated. Incorporated. I chose that fraternity because they are the fraternity that fits my personality the best. They are a bunch of great guys. Um, family guys. I love the the brotherhood that I share with them. I've been affiliated with them for over 30 years. That's what that's what makes a fraternity. Is it is it a law school fraternity or no or college fraternity? fraternity. Yeah. Um that's that's what makes a fraternity. I, I pledged to a fraternity. I was a member of a fraternity for a semester. I, I didn't like it once I joined. I had a lot of fun as a pledge, but once I became a member, I just wasn't a fan of it. It wasn't for me. But listening to all the stories of all the brotherhood after college that's where it is and i didn't see that when i was there part of me wishes i stayed but yeah it wasn't it wasn't for me i didn't i didn't i didn't enjoy it that much but i understand it yeah i hope that it wasn't an insult it wasn't supposed to be no not at all no all right heather again technical oh yeah you I have a lot of technical difficulties. I'm not the best at this. I just, I've only had a channel for a few months or for about eight months now. So 
I have a lot of technical difficulties. And I think you're doing pretty good. I and Crystal, she's a Judge King fan, so smart and intriguing. Just have a question: How do you leave work at home? You have some tough cases, so it's kind of what I asked you earlier. If you want to give you know a quick synopsis on that. Well, believe it or not, I probably don't leave a lot of my work at the office. I bring some of it home. I tell my family about some of the cases. I talk to my mom and dad about my cases, who watches every day too. I talk to my wife and my kids. I tell my classes about some of my cases. And they've become somewhat of a part of who I am because a lot of the cases I'll never ever forget. I've forgotten quite a bit of the stuff that's come before me, but there are some cases that just will stick with me forever. And they're gonna probably be a part or have a chapter in a book that I'll eventually sit down and force myself to write. Cause I have some heck of a stories. Sure you do. Both what? as a prosecutor and as a judge. What are your plans? Like, this is the question that I actually wanted to ask you earlier that I forgot. You know what? I'm going to get through these because now we're over an hour and I generally only go live for an hour. So we're probably not going to have time to watch court. We can if you want, but I don't like hanging out this long because people start getting tired and dozing off when they see the same face all day long. They can look at your face. I'll just jump off and you guys can just <laughs> hang out. Um, peeps. What's up, Peeps? She's doing her dwarves for her for you. It's a compliment. Uh, Erica, oh, okay. thank, thank you so you. much. Uh, two months goes quickly by. Yeah, thank you so much, Erica, for being a member for two months. Fozzy, mayo and grilled cheese, we need a verdict. We already <laughs> gave you a verdict. We already gave you a verdict. I told you it was going to come up a couple times. Yeah, he <laughs> said no mayo. Butter. No mayo. He says, Fozzy, you're wrong. You're wrong. And also, he's a Texas. He, like, he lives in Texas. He lives in Texas and he's a Steelers fan. He's just a weirdo. <laughs> okay legal fiction thank you so much for the the super chat awesome night i it, it has been an awesome night thank you we're not done yet uh whitway member for one month thank you colin hello judge king thank you thank you whitway hello uh, turkey goes well with grilled cheese says johnny may member for two months turkey goes well with grilled cheese it does the you can put white meat on grilled cheese. You just have to kind of do it a little different because white meat, turkey and chicken can be a little, it can be dry. So you have to cook it the right way to make it work with the grilled cheese because you don't want a dry grilled cheese. That's why you need butter and not mayonnaise. Exactly. <laughs> Fozzie, unsubscribe. Going to find a mayo channel. Well, thank you for announcing your- Oh, your Fozzie. Thank you for don't announcing- Don't be like that, Fozzie. Come on, Fozzie, give us another chance. I'm sure we can agree on something. Don't leave, my friend. Don't yeah. See, see, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Even though I was like, okay, he's not going anywhere. Just so you're <laughs> just so we're clear. He's not going. But uh I was gonna I was gonna talk some shit to him, but yeah, you you were all kind and nice, so I can't top that. Uh thank you, thank you, Colin. Judge King, you're awesome. Judge King is awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. These are just going on forever. I think they're coming in as I'm reading them. Don't pay attention to Fozzie No Mayo. See? See? <laughs> Fozzie? So, Colin, why don't you get all these people to view what we're doing down in 36th District Court? We'd love to have them. Have them drop in the chat. All right. The more, all the right. merrier. All right. I will. Monday. Monday. I will I will schedule a so we have some. We have some. We have some pretty heavy stuff that's coming down the pipe, one of which is the little girl who was over someone's house visiting, sleep on a couch, and a, some idiot shot up the house, and she caught one in the head and was killed. One I just heard about yesterday, a three-year-old was left with mother's friend who was babysitting, and allegedly the baby was beaten to death. So those are going to probably garner a lot of, immediate, a lot of media attention, but I always find those kinds of cases sad but intriguing because how do you wrap your mind around beating a three-year-old to death or you're shooting into a house that you know is occupied by people, human beings? You know, we have to really get 
away from solving all of our differences with guns. Yeah. Yeah, we really do. I watched, as part of my research on figuring out how, what I was going to ask you, I saw your interview. It's a news channel up there in Detroit. I'm not, I don't, again, I live in Ohio, so I don't, it's not a local channel to me. It's like the morning something. You were on a morning show. It's about a 10 minute interview. And the the guy who interviewed you was kind of grilling you on gun questions. And your answers were intriguing. Charlie Langton. Yep, that's exactly Charlie what Langton. Yeah. Yeah. I think he asked me if I was the king of the world, what would I do to stop crying? <laughs> that's <laughs> the most bizarre question anybody's ever asked me. But I love Charlie. Yeah, he, he did a good job. He just, he just but he was pushing the gun thing and it was just I, I okay, we're not gonna I'm not gonna bring up politics. We're not gonna do that. So I watched the interview to to see what his style was and see how you were gonna react. And I'm like, okay, this, this is what we're not gonna do. I'm I'm not saying that he did a bad interview. It was good. You were you were into it, you answered very intelligently, and he was bouncing questions right back at you. So he did a good job. It was just it was just all the gun control questions that I was like I'm gonna stay away from that. Yeah. Not okay. uh not something I want to bring up on my channel. I, I don't because I don't need to, All I'm right. not going to. But uh you did a good Your job. Show. You were yeah, but also, also, you look so good on that channel, man. Like you you just always, always look. Every single time I see you, you're dressed to the nine. I, I just want to see you in a t shirt one time. Don't I was prepared to do that today until you told me you were wearing a suit. Yeah, I know you asked. I, like, I, I got home. I came out the suit and everything. I was like, okay, what does Colin want me to wear? I don't know. I didn't tell you to wear a suit. I told you, I'm not going to lie to you, Judge. I am going to wear my <laughs> suit. Because well, I don't I, want you. I wasn't going to come now. in here looking like a bum and you're looking like you're straight off Wall Street. Uh, I, I would have rather that because that for once in my life, I could say I look better than you. <laughs> But you you asked the question and I had to I had to answer you honestly. You can't lie to it. Like don't don't lie to a judge. You just don't do it. You don't lie to anybody, but especially not judges. All right. That's uh, another one of my pet peeves. I don't like to be lied to or lied on. Yeah, I I I understand. The we were talking about Judge Perkins earlier. The video that I covered earlier today, somebody was in his court in the driver's seat of his of her car and. She, Judge Perkins said, you're here for a suspended license charge. Are you in the driver's seat of your car? She's like, no. And he's like, I can see you. You're on video. I'm not in the driver's seat of my car. I'm in the passenger seat. He's like, let me see. Turn your camera over. Let me see your passenger seat right now. And she's like, oh, this passenger seat? And he's just like, ah. Okay, so I can, I can probably trump that one. I'm not sure how okay. long you've been watching, but this is back when I was in courtroom 538. I had a guy who told me he missed his court date because he was in the hospital. I said, when were you discharged from the hospital? He said, I just got discharged. I said, you still have your, your ban on? He said, uh, yeah, yeah, I have it on. It fell off. It fell off. He picked up one of those parking tickets that you get, you know, when you pay for parking and they give you a parking stub. And he tried to convince me that that was the band. As well. I said, where are you now if you just got out the hospital? He's like, well, I'm, I'm walking down West Grand Boulevard. And he shows me, he puts the camera up and he shows the hospital down about two blocks away. Yeah. And then I had another one. Guy says, well, I didn't come to court because my daughter's sick. I was like, okay, where is she? He's like, oh, she's asleep. I said, let me see her. He's like. Well, she's asleep. I said, that's okay. Let me see her. So he goes in the room and he has these pillows with a cover over the pillows. And he says, she's right there. I said, pull the cover back. Let me see her. He's like, you want me to just come down? I said, no, I want you to show me your daughter. He said, I'm going to just come down. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if criminals were smart, we'd be out of business, right? If criminals were smart, they'd be putting their talents into something else. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, you're right. If criminals weren't getting caught, yes, you'd be out of business. Yeah. Well, they get caught right. because they're not smart. 
Yes, yes. <coughs> How about pro se? <coughs> I'm a, I need to get some water here in a second. Uh, Jay, I don't. How about pro se? He must have made this comment when we were talking about something. Pro se versus stops it, maybe. Um, pro se defendants. Those are very yeah. difficult to to deal with. In fact, 36 District Court. We assign attorneys at every stage of the process because we recognize that it makes the process go smoother. The attorney is there to act as a buffer to advise the defendant what's going on, what to anticipate, what to say, what not to say, that type of thing. Are you still there, Colin? I'm still here. I'm just coughing. Oh. So I just turned myself off. Oh, okay. Off All right. I'm still listening, though. Okay. Keep going. So whenever I get a defendant who tells me that they want to represent themselves, I do everything I can, although they have a constitutional right to do so, I do everything I can to persuade them not to. And at the end of the day, if they still insist on it, I still may appoint an attorney to sit with them to advise them because you still have to follow the rules of criminal procedure. And just because you don't know them, I'm not going to give you a pass. And so that's one of the things. And I also always do a comparison with the attorney and the defendant. So did you go to law school, sir? Well, no, you didn't go I'm... to law school. Did you go to co did you go to college? I thought you were asking. Did me. you go to did yes. you graduate from high school? No, I I, I... um okay. education. And then I asked the attorney. Well, sir, did you go to college? What college did you graduate from? What law school did you graduate from? How long have you been practicing law? How many times have you appeared before me? You've even appeared, you even practiced with me in, when I was a prosecuting attorney and we did cases against each other, didn't you? Win some, lose some, right? And how many cases have you handled like this? And so I try to draw that stark difference between the experience and the knowledge of the attorney versus the defendant. And I turn to the defendant and I ask, do you still think that you're more capable of representing yourself than this person is? And I'll get an idiot to say once in a while, yes, I do. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you do that, but understand I'm not going to cut you any breaks just because you don't know the rules of evidence. You still have to abide by them. But I am going to allow the attorney to be present in case you have any questions or to help you do certain things. He's going to be there as an advisor for you. As a prosecutor, I had one defendant who fired his attorney in the middle of the trial and chose to represent himself. He was looking at the preliminary exam transcript and said, turned to the attorney and said, save my life, man. And I said, oh, my gosh. So he represented himself and he called himself as a witness in his case in chief. And he took the stand and he started asking himself questions. And everybody in the courtroom was laughing except for the jury. The jury was stone faced because there was no laughing matter. Somebody lost their life. Even the judge had her calendar in front of her face and you could see her bouncing from laughing because it was so hysterical that he was asking himself questions. Please tell me your name. My name is Rodney Williams. And it went on like that for a good 30, 40 minutes. I um, that last part just took kind of took the question out of my head. I still have a question, but it's not a question; it's a statement. So I I watch I bounce around a lot of courts. I watch a lot of courts. I had a judge give an example, and this is one of the best examples I've ever heard a judge say on when someone says I want to go pro se, I want to represent myself. He said, "What do you do for a living?" And he's like, "I'm a mechanic." Okay, good. You're a mechanic. How many years of experience do you have? 20 years experience. Okay. So I'm going to show up at your job tomorrow and I'm going to take in a customer's car and I'm just going to work on it. Do you trust me to do that? It's like, no, absolutely not. Like, then why would you represent yourself? Why would you be coming in the court and acting like you've done this for a long time when you're not going to trust me to do that? He's like, well, it's different. Like, mm, it's not. But he talked about it. I've seen talked other judges. It. I've seen other judges do that as well. They use they don't use that. They use the doctor scenario, you know. Yeah. I've Are you a doctor? You know. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 try to get through these. 
because they, they do keep coming in. So we're not going to be able to watch any court because now we're at an hour and 15 minutes. So we're going to finish these up and then we're going to say goodnight to everybody. So thank okay. you everyone for showing up. But uh, I'm sorry I took up so uh, much of your time though. You're, no, this was this was your time. I thought that I honestly thought that I'd get about thirty minutes with you, and then I would finish up the hour watching court. So that's why I had a video ready. But this is this is better. This is way better. I'd rather, much rather spend the time hanging out with you. And so with the so is everyone here. All right, okay. Lexa, thank you so much for your time and wisdom, Judge King, from a fan in southwestern Florida. Thank you, Lexa. <laughs> I see spin the glass around the glass around bench for protection or printer. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the plexiglass that you guys, I see it's, it's heavy in Detroit. Um, the 36th district. Is it for, did you put it up for the pandemic or is it for protection? It's a good question. Well, I didn't put it up at all. That's, um, all throughout our court and it's up Sorry. for the purposes of the pandemic, not for our protection. Well, our you protection from the pandemic. No. No, no. That came from administration. And I actually wanted it taken down, but they won't do it. Because it makes you it hard person, for me to... You... Makes it... Go ahead. I was going to make a joke. It makes it hard for you to do what? It makes it hard, it's hard sometimes to hear people when I'm behind plexiglass. And sometimes it makes it hard for us to see them as well. That's fair. Because of the glare it from also, the lights and so forth. It it also might eliminate some of your trolls in your comment section if you take them down and they can hear you better. <laughs> well, I, I thought I explained that today. That so long as I'm able to hear, it doesn't matter if you guys hear or not, you know. I was I understand laughing that, that it's entertainment. Yeah. I, I was laughing at that. I I made some jokes. Rachel was laughing at me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Pluto. What is this? Pluto spiral shape. All right. I need you to help me say that name. What is that name? Pluto Fyro. It's so small. I can barely see it. I have to take my eye, I, my contact lenses out to see that. I'm Pluto nearsighted. I don't know. We'll call him Pluto for short. Yeah, Pluto, thank you so much. <laughs> Judge King, thank you for thank always you. saying no means no. No means no. It does. Another another signature all, line is... All what, day, every day. What part of no contact do you not understand? That's another signature line of yours. <laughs> Love it. Every time I hear that, I'm like, okay, what's going on? All right. Lolly. Good to see you, Lolly. Judge King and Judge Perkins are two of my absolute favorites. Me too. Me too. Uh, thank you, lady. Stacy Armstrong, I knew you were in a fraternity. Thank you. Oh, that was she. I think she asked the original question. Blue Fi. And then Heather's back. What's your next step in your career? Are you working towards any goals? So I'm letting the the Lord guide me into what it is that he wants me to do. For a long time, I thought I wanted to go to circuit court. And I had tried to get appointed to circuit court on at least three or four occasions. And each time I was turned down cold. Someone else was selected. Um, and... In some instances, it was someone with less experience, and I just knew that I got the shaft. But that's okay with me because in the long in the long run, it turns out better that I stayed where I was at because I probably would have taken a pay cut because I thought I knew what I wanted for me, but the Lord knew best what was for me. And... I think that 36th District Court is the best fit for me at this time. If the Lord sees fit to move me to another court of higher jurisdiction, whether that be the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court 
or who knows, maybe my own judge TV show and I can have you on the red seat. And um, let's but, go. Let's go. <laughs> but I, I'm waiting to see what the Lord has in store for me next. That's a good answer. I wanted to ask you about that because you've mentioned it a few times in your comment section, but I didn't want to say it because I don't know what uh, I don't know if it's a joke or if it's something you want to have your own judge show. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind that at all. Because um, I would probably use the angle of not only just judging cases, but educating the public as well. How I reached the decision that I did or why I reached the decision that I did. All the things that I'm not really able to do now because I can't really talk about the cases. That's fair. Yeah, you can't. And it's so hard for me not to ask you questions about ongoing cases. It's really hard because I, I, I watch you every day and I, I want to ask you questions and I can't, I can't. All right. Well, we can, we can ask general questions about it. We can, we can, but then that's only going to make the wheel spin harder and we're not going to go down that road. That's just to avoid. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Judge King, your tie is the best. Okay. So, CRD loves tea. Like well, thank you. Than mine. Your tie <laughs> game is strong. Your, your tie game is strong. I've got four oh, ties. You. But you have like seven thousand. I do have a Lex, lot. I, remember, I have an awful yeah, lot. You do. You do. You do. I know. I see him every day. <laughs> there was a a clip that I was trying to find of yours, and I had a snippet of it. So I'm like, I want to go and watch this entire hearing. And so my snippet was about 10 seconds long. So I know what tie he's wearing. So I start going through all your videos. It took me about 30 minutes to find the video. <laughs> not the tie, not the tie, not the tie, not the tie, um, not the tie, not the tie, not the tie. Not... You're it's funny. I do that sometimes too. Sometimes I do that too. If I'm trying to find a particular day, I was like, okay, so I think I I did that case about a week ago. I want to go back and listen to something. Or if I held a case in part and I have to refresh my memory as to what was testified to on the prior date, then trying to find, because I, I don't erase any of my videos. There's only one video that I, I had to erase, though, because the prosecutor made a boo-boo in that it was a young girl that was being sexually assaulted, and they presented a video. And the video actually showed a little too much. And so the family was not too happy about it. And they asked the prosecutor if I could take it down. The prosecutor came to me and asked if I could take it down. So I did. Thank you for doing In fact, that. I don't even know how to take down my videos. Well, I'm, I'm glad you figured it out because no one needs to see that. So thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it showed too much, way too much. Uh, one ass, one badass mofo. What are your thoughts on pro se no mayo? All right, so now we're getting all the questions that are. I think they're piling up because we're we're slow at responding. But uh, we already answered oh, okay. that one ass bad one. I keep saying one ass, one badass mofo, one ass boat momo. I can't even. <laughs> all right, too many words, too many words, and not enough spaces. One badass momo. Uh. He said, he said butter. He said anyone that uses mayo is a weirdo and pro se. <laughs> That's exactly. I, just, I, try I, to I try to discourage it as much as possible. Yes. There we go. There we go. All right. Debbie Baker's back for $10. If you leave me now, Fozzie, you'll take away the biggest part of me. Oh, Debbie. He's not going anywhere, Debbie. Don't worry. But thank you for the super <laughs> chat. Foz Fozzie's stuck with me whether or not he likes it or not. Fozzie, who you trying to kid? You ain't going nowhere. See, everybody, everybody, everyone's on Team Fozzie, uh -huh. except for the Mayo part. Just don't do it, Fozzie. Do you remember anything you watched and the judge say? Okay, I'll let you read this. This is a question to you. Okay. Do you remember? Do you remember anything you watched another judge say or do that inspired you to add that particular method, skill, technique? into your own repertoire. Yes, I think one of my biggest heroes was Judge George Crockett. 
I don't think I think he was a junior judge, George Crockett, Jr. He was when I was a prosecuting attorney, he was one of the judges that probably intimidated me the most because I had so much respect for him. Judge Crockett, as well as Kim Worthy when she was a judge and Judge Thomas Jackson. Those were the three that I wanted to make sure I was on my P's and Q's for because those were the people, the judges that I looked up to the most. And so Judge Crockett would always tell young attorneys, he was always teaching from the bench. And that's what I liked about him. He would, for instance, an attorney would come before him and say, well, your honor, I'm going to request a trial. And he would say denied. And the attorney would be baffled. Mm -hmm. He's like, how are you denying me a trial? He's like, you don't request a trial. You demand a trial. You have to demand a trial. And so that stuck with me in terms of the terminology that you have to use in court and that he was always teaching from the bench. And as you know, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, I have a lot of young attorneys that come before me in my particular court. And I take pride in those young attorneys. Just Drain, I mean, Shelly Drain is not a young attorney. Shelly was around when I was in the prosecutor's office. But a lot of the other attorneys that come before me they get promoted out of my courtroom. They do a fantastic job. Some of the other prosecutors like Sarah Bonomo and it's a whole host of them. Every time they leave me, they get a supervisory position. And that's because I think I'd like to take a little bit of credit in that in teaching them from my rulings. And sometimes I follow up questions that they have that they didn't ask that they probably should have asked. And I do that for the defense too. So my purpose in doing that is actually twofold because I want to know some information that wasn't asked, but also to communicate to the attorneys that you should have asked this question to make it more clear. Like today we had a witness who was on the stand and poor Miss Ripley, she kept asking this very elongated question about the, the little girl was talking about being violated below her belt. And I said, why don't you just tell her what it's called? Are you, are you still referring to the, your private part that you use the bathroom from and pee comes out? And she kept doing this and this guy had did this like four separate occasions and she kept going through it. And then, he she talked about his private part below his belt. I said, just call it a penis. Why don't you call it a vagina? And when I interjected that, everybody smiled, including Miss Ripley. It's like, okay, so you recognize, okay, so you said that private part you're talking about that you pee that's below your belt, we're going to call that a vagina, okay? And the little girl said, okay. And I, I said, can you remember that? She said, yes. I said, and the private part that he uses that's below his belt, we're going to call that a penis, okay? And then it just went so much smoother, so much easier. And I hope that from that point forward, the attorney will be able to use that. That was a very difficult case. That was a very difficult case. Yeah, uh, those those last two cases today kind of wore me out. Yeah, it's like I said, I keep freezing. Can you still hear me okay? I keep seeing my video. Freeze. Yes. Um, I hear you. But, but still, you still gave, you know, you still were smiling. You're still in the chat afterwards. You still had the senior smile. And then you gave us the the heart after. <laughs> so, so yeah, mm. it's they're, they're tough. But you, you still maintain. You maintain your head. And this is why a lot of us, most of us, almost all of us could not do what you do. All right, Sparkle Poots. Uh, oh my God, Yakin, Yakin bullshit, and Judge King announces upcoming horror. I'm going home now. Oh my God, huh? Yakin, BS, and Judge King announces upcoming horror. I'm going home now. I don't understand either. I don't understand either. Sparkle Poots. Sparkle Poots is a good friend. Um, but yeah, if we're both confused, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer that. So we're just going to move on. Sparkle Wiz, but thank you for the super chat. 
Chaotic Good, new member. Thank you so much, Chaotic Good, for becoming a new member. Mia Mino, good to see you. Thank you for welcoming us into your courtroom. Mia Mina, good to see you. Thank you. Membership for five months. That's awesome. Ed, good to see you, Ed. Thank you for coming here and spending time with us, Judge King. My pleasure, Ed. Legal fiction. What if a pro se stayed at the Holiday Inn Express last night? Then if he stayed at the Holiday Inn Express last night, he's basically a lawyer. Do you, do you know the joke? Have you seen those? No, I don't. No, uh, I figured that joke, was an inside joke I didn't get. You've heard the joke. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Yes, I've heard that. So Holiday Inn Express, you know, they had a commercial for for a couple of years that, you know, it was the same thing. I'm not a doctor, but I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. It was, it was a commercial that went on for a while. So yeah. Thank you. Legal fictions. <laughs> All right. Mr. Bill Fox. I appeared before judge Judy in New York in New York County family court as a social worker. She is nice to the people on television. All right, thank you. Uh, is she? Mr. okay? I, I have no comment on Judge Judy. Have you ever met her? Do you know who she I, I know you probably know who she is, but I know who she is. I've never met her. Talk? I have, no, I have I, met um, Judge Mathis. Judge Mathis actually came from 36th District Court. Yeah, you, you sit on you sit in his uh, his old seat, right? Kind of. I'm not sure if it's his All particular right. seat, but yes, he was a judge there. And he right. did the criminal docket like the rest of us. All right. Sorry. That wasn't supposed to, that wasn't supposed to be an insult. I just see that comment floating around a, a little bit in your chat. All right. On my own time. Hello, Judge King. It's nice to see you here with Colin. It makes me wonder how you and the other judges managed to keep it together with some of the knuckleheads you have to deal with. Like me. Well, we have our share of knuckleheads, and we also have our share of people who just aren't used to the whole criminal process. It's so refreshing whenever I get someone to come in court and they don't know where to go, what to do. It's just everything is just foreign to them. This is a person who's been displaced, and they don't want to be there. And I don't want it to be a bad experience, although it's kind of hard not to communicate that on the docket that I'm in. But I, like I said a while ago, I'm a people person, and sometimes you just have to meet people where they are, where they're at. And I've had some folk that have come before me that put the toe in ghetto, okay? Or just plain crazy, nonsensical on some other stuff, you know? I don't know what's going on with them. But just trying to bring some normalcy to the process and get through this as professionally as we can. I like that. I like that. <clears throat> You get a, you get a lot of young people in your courtroom, and it might be their first time going through this the system or going through the judicial system, and yeah, they have no idea what to expect. They're probably terrified. So, right. but you're extremely professional. You what what I always what always shocks me is when people lash out at the judges. And it happens in every courtroom. And the judges aren't the people, they're not the ones who put you there. And it's just the lack of understanding of the process where they think that I'm going to be mad at you and I'm going to lash out at you, even though you're not there to hurt them. You're not there to help them either. You're there to get from point A to point B. And it just, it amazes me sometimes that uh, they look at you like, you're going to drop these charges. I didn't do this. Like, that's not my job. I'm not here to drop your charges. 
wrong mm-hmm. person. And it's just a lack of understanding of the, how the court system works. So again, the teacher tries to come out of me from time to time, and I try to explain as best I can the process and how this works. And sometimes you just have to go through the motions and let this justice system work. And, yeah. you know, a lot of these people don't fool me, though, because it's not their first time coming through it. You're charged as a habitual four. You've been through this before. You know what to expect. You This isn't your first preliminary examination. This isn't your first bond hearing either. <laughs> bond denied. Um, all right, Ed. Ed. Ed's awesome. Ed's been around my channel for a long time. I've known him for a long time. Uh, Judge King, I know you pick up on what a judge does from practicing as a lawyer, but when transit, but when transitioning from a lawyer to a judge, do you get any special training? Oh, that's a, actually that's an excellent question. And the short answer to that is really no. Although there is a school that we can go to, and they go around the country. They go to Reno, Nevada where we can go there and we can get some special Mm -hmm. training in domestic violence type cases and that type of thing. But for the most part, what we do is on the job training. And that's why I think that your better judges are judges who have actually practiced law for a period of time in the area that they're being a judge in. Do you think prosecutors, I don't think, I don't like seeing people that have been elected or appointed judge who have never really tried a case before. That's fair. Personal question, not personal. It's about being a judge, but do you think prosecutors or let's say I was let's say I was an attorney for 15 years and I would just and I would just offered to become a judge. Do you think it would be better for me to be a prosecutor or defender or defense attorney? Mainly. I know you know a lot of people go back and forth and do a lot of, you know, they do both. But do prosecutors make better judges or defense attorneys make better judges, in your opinion? I don't think the their occupation or prior occupation um, is really decisive in that area. I think we have some very good judges that are former defense attorneys like Judge Giles. We have some very good very good judges that are former prosecuting attorneys. Uh, probably too many to name. But um, I think it all depends on the person and that person's personality and their ability to deal with people. And again, the experience that they bring to the table, whether it be defense or prosecution. Okay, thank you. That, that good answer. All right. Ever since you told me that it looks like you're sleeping, I can't get that out of my head because it looks like you're <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> right now, it does. It does. It does. And I'm like, I keep looking at oh, the time. Like, oh, it's 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 nine forty. We've been on here for an hour and forty. How about minutes. that? Is this is this better? <laughs> it's better. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> All right, Cynthia Bear. Thank you for, so much for the two dollars. Thank you so much, uh, Fozzie's cat. I don't know about the Mayo question, but let's get real. Cats or dogs? Are you a cat dogs. person? Or a person? Good answer. Dogs. Good answer. Little Spitfire for two dollars. Thank you so much. Little Spitfire for two more dollars. Little Spitfire is on fire. Three two dollar chats back to back to back. <laughs> remember the PD who yelled and said she was. Remember the public defender who yelled and said she wasn't come. I know what. Oh you, yeah. You mentioned this earlier. You mentioned this earlier. Yeah. We don't have to go into this. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think she was a public defender though, but she was a defense attorney. Yes. She did say, I'm not coming. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we went into that earlier. You can rewind the video and uh, and see where he mentioned that a little bit ago. But it was 
good insight. He was very Judge King was very insightful on that. But we don't have to go into personal details about about that question. Uh, Cynthia Barr Bear is it? I guess it's Bear. Cynthia Bear is frustrating to see repeat offenders. Is it frustrating to see repeat offenders? It is. You know, you would think that you would learn your lesson. And the funny thing is that it's something about the Wayne County Jail that makes people start rethinking their lives and they're on the right track as long as they're in jail. But as soon as they get out, you go right back to the same thing. That's the problem. I don't see a whole lot of repeat offenders or people who have come before me, but we do get a lot of repeat offenders because if you listen to the charges as I read them, we have habitual third, habitual fourth, you know, um, I think they get dealt with a little differently because they have so much experience in breaking the law. And so I take that into account when I'm addressing bond. You know, this is a, a person who does not want to follow the law. They've been through the ringer more than one time and their issues they appear to be a career criminal. And so they have to be dealt with, you know, and especially if I see a pattern where it seems like you're becoming more violent with your offenses. You start off small and it keeps building and keeps building until you really hurt someone. Then I think we as a system have maybe even failed to some degree in not addressing that issue to where this person isn't out and having the opportunity to keep hurting people. Yeah, I, that's fair. I, I don't know. I can't comment on anything else. Um, thank you for that answer. That was, that was a good answer. Um, whatever is the name, you always keep dignity in your courtroom. Thank you, whatever. I try to. I try to. It's not always easy. Um, because sometimes we get people who really test our patience, whether it be defendants or the attorneys. Um, <laughs> there were some, a group of attorneys, I'm not going to specifically name anyone, but it just seemed like their mission was to create some kind of strife. You know, most of the issues that are brought before me can be resolved if the people just talk to each other. If you just talk to the prosecutor or the prosecutor just talk to the defense, the protective orders was an issue for a long time. Prosecutor doesn't want to release certain discovery until defense attorney signs off on it that I'm not going to disclose this to anyone that shouldn't that it shouldn't be disclosed to. Well, can't you guys work that out? Why are you bringing me in the middle of this? If you just talk to each other, I'm sure you can reach an agreement. Save the big stuff for me that you can agree on. I don't want to have to solve your little stuff. I've well, seen that judge, a couple the, times. The court rule, yeah, the court rule says that, you know, I don't have to sign that. They have to give it to me. Do you want the stuff or don't you? Do you want it? Do you plan on giving it to someone else? Then what's the problem? Sign the freaking paper and get your discovery and prepare like you're supposed to. Well, it's the principle of the thing. Come on. I'm trying to keep my eyes wide open for you. <laughs> attorneys, attorneys have an image of being like professional professionals. Mm -hmm. And when what opened my eyes wide, we're talking about oh, wide eyes, is there is a, there's still a lot of cat fights between attorneys in court, and it it blows my mind that I had this thought that you go to court and these guys are they're professional all the time, they know each other, you know, it just they run through the docket, they do what you know, it's it's a smooth ship, and then you watch it, you just sit down and watch an entire docket, and you see a prosecutor, defense attorney, just for five minutes, just go back and forth. And it's just watching. I can always tell 
I can always tell who's appointed to a case and who's retained on a case. That person that's yeah. retained on a case sometimes has to give a show for their client and, and the client's families that, oh, he's fighting. He's fighting for me. You know, even even though he just talked for five minutes and didn't say a word. But, yeah, he's <laughs> right. All right. We actually, oh, we almost got to the last one. Uh, we got one more after this. Have to disagree. Cats or breasts. You know what? You, you're entitled to your opi opinion, legal fiction. But to each I his own. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you're, you are entitled to your opinion. I just I just don't know how your opinion is that wrong. But, you know, have have a good night. I'm just kidding. Legal fiction, you're awesome. You're, you're awesome, legal fiction. You're awesome. <laughs> I'm a smart ass. I'm a smart ass. That's that's why that's why they love me. That's why Legal Fiction keeps coming back. Legal Fiction is awesome. He knows I was joking. All right. This is the last one. Uh Heineken. Judge King, how long, how long before you have to have to get put a restraint order again? Oh. <laughs> Heineken. I'm glad that's the last one. Put a restraining off. Order on Detective Rachel McRae. Why would yeah, I do that? That was a joke. Yeah, she has me, she has my back. Exactly. She's here having your back. She's been in the chat all night having your back. So Heineken, calm has down. She? All right. she yeah. Um Tall Glass is here too. I just I just saw her name. Oh Tall Glass. Um, I'm scrolling. Yep, Rachel's still here. Rachel and Tall Glass are both here. Hi Rachel. Hi Tall Glass. Oh, I, I, Rachel, I am so sorry. I did not pause the stream and say hi to you. So it's a thing. Every time that Rachel's in the chat, I have to pause the stream and I have to say hi to her. So Rachel, I am so sorry for not doing that. Also, Rachel, thank you hey. so much for. She's the reason why you're here. She she set this up for. Her. She helped me set this up. Hey, Rachel is serious business. When I do make it big, I'm going to find a special spot for Rachel. You better. When I make it big, I'm going to she has She has talent. She so has talent. You, she really does. So it's a race. If I make it big before you, I'm taking her first. So you better hurry up. If you make it big before me, you better take me. <laughs> I will. I'll bring you to. I'll bring you to. All right. All right. That's all I got. Um, Thank you so much for coming on. It's been almost two hours, so we're not walking forward. <laughs> I, you, I, I went, I you went almost gave me a whole nother docket, man. I did. I did. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start walking forward. Let's go. I'm just kidding. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out for this long. This was awesome. Thank you so much for coming by. Again, thank you, Rachel, for helping. Well, thank you for us having up. me. Yeah, let's. Uh, I would love to do this again sometime soon. Next time won't be an interview, it'll be. Uh, Reacting to court, you you actually jump into my world and we can uh, react to court together. Okay, but, uh, can I leave you with one thing? Do you remember the um, the judge that was attacked by a defendant when she was about to sentence him? He came over the bench. Yeah. So the I, running I joke joke was <laughs> the running joke was, what if that happened in your courtroom? I said, if that happened in my courtroom, then I would be charged because Kim Worthy would hold the position that Judge King did not have to do all of that to him. When he jumped <laughs> over the bench. He went way too far in what he did to that young man. He did not have to do that. That was excessive. Yeah. That 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 is kind of the same thing Judge Slavin said is he said <laughs> I I strongly believe in my second amendment right. Come threaten me and see what happens to you. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. That that's a good answer though. I like that. Yeah, and I I trust that. Like I said, you were the first when that when that rocket started outside your courtroom in the hallway. You were the first person. You zipped out there. Your robe was still on. Like I said, I I laughed because it was flapping behind you like a cape. I'm like, Superman King is on his way to save the day. I caught a little bit of heat behind that because the officer's primary objective is to make sure that I'm safe. So I should not be putting myself in harm's way, so to speak. Probably should not go in, but I wouldn't worry. Nobody's yeah. going to do anything to me. I, I understand that. 
I understand why you could catch a little bit of heat for that. They they probably didn't expect you to do that, but they know now. There, if there's yeah, stuff they know. going on in the, the hallway, officers who who've been around me, that's not the first time that that's happened, or the first time I did that. When I was doing the criminal docket, when we were housed in th in Frank Murphy Third Circuit Court, similar situation. We had it was actually a pregnant woman. It was girls that were fighting. When I walked out in the hallway, there was weave all out on the floor. Wigs were everywhere. I had deputies that were injured, and I pointed them out, said, lock her up, lock her up, and lock her up. And they took them back because I saw it with my own eyes. I didn't have to have a witness come and tell me what happened. I saw it. And because I see it, I don't have to have a hearing. So I held them in contempt of court. The pregnant girl got 90 days in the, in the Wayne County Jail. The girl she was fighting got 60 days. The pregnant girl apparently had another child, and her mother came to court the next, the following Monday, because this happened on a Friday, so telling me that it was not fair that I locked her daughter up. I said, why isn't it fair? She said, because I have to watch her kid. I said, well, that sounds like a personal problem to me. Has nothing to do. I said, you know what's not fair? What's not fair is you coming down here acting a dang on fool and thinking you're going to walk away. So I have to show people. I'm going to make an example out of them because I have jurors that are coming down here to see all this commotion, people fighting in court. You think they want to come down to that? No, it's not going to happen here. And the other reason I do it is because there's such a lack of respect for my particular court because we are in the city of Detroit. They wouldn't dare go and do those kinds of things in some of our suburban courts. And if you're not going to do it there, you're not going to do it here either. That's fair. Superman King. <laughs> All right. With that, with that, I am going to let you go. I'm going to let you have a good night. Thank you so much for hanging out this long. I very much appreciate it. Oh, man, we it. still got about eight minutes before we get to two hours. Don't you like dealing in nice round numbers? <laughs> I, I do. I do. I mean, we have we did actually get two more Super Chats. Uh, we can read those, but it's mm -hmm. not going to take eight minutes. Um, thank you, Judge and Colin, Cynthia Bear, and Miss Thank Megadeth. you, Cynthia. Miss Megadeth. Hiya. 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 That's all I got. That's all I got. Um, she sounds yeah. almost like Manda. <laughs> Manda says, hey, yeah, though. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for having me, sir. You have a good weekend. You Hope well. to see you Monday. Same bat station, same bat time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Love it. Love it. Thank <laughs> you so much. You have a great night. All right. Thank I you. You too. You okay. Right, All right, there we have it. So that just happened. That just happened. Didn't expect that to go for two hours. I really didn't. I didn't. You guys are all awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out. Now, we were supposed to be going and rating Jay Hart's new video. But he messaged me earlier and said he forgot to keep pushing it back because he was supposed to keep pushing it back. But he's new at this whole YouTube thing, and his video already got put out. So I don't know. We might still be rating his video. I don't know. But he just started his channel. So if we do get sent over there, even though it's finished, and you just watch the video, drop a like, hit a sub. You can use them. It's uh, just started his channel last week. And, yeah, Law Talk with Mike is on. Ooh, I've never rated Law Talk with Mike before. All right. I'm going to raid Law Talk with Mike because I've never done it before. So I'm going to change it. Um, Jay Hart, somebody, can somebody put in Jay Hart's link before I raid him? Someone put in Jay Hart's link because I want everybody to go sub to his channel. Go sub to his channel. And we're going to raid Mike, but go sub to Jay Hart's channel. Please go sub to Jay Hart's channel. And I am going to change this to raiding Mike. So I don't think I can raid Jay Hart anymore anyways. Huh, that's weird. It's not giving me the option. Oh, I got
me refresh it. It was giving me the, the early options. I was gonna say Bacon's not live anymore. Why is it telling me I can redelight re uh redirect to him? All right. All right. Everyone go sub to J Hart. Go do it. Please, please, and thank you. And thank you so much for everybody. Thank you also so much for your super chats. Thank you to the mods. The mods worked their butts off tonight to make sure that this was a safe environment for Judge King to be here. Judge Slavin stopped by for a minute. Thank you so much, Judge Slavin. He's probably not still here anymore. Um, thank you again to Rachel, who helped me set this up. It was actually all her. I asked her, and she's like, you know, I'll do my best. And then she messaged me and was like, we got this. I'm like, let's go. So all I did was ask her. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um that's all I got. Let's go watch Mike. Let's go watch Mike. Everyone's awesome. Great night. And yeah, I love the nights where I don't have to play court because I watched it all day. So this was awesome. Let's go say hi to Mike. Make sure you say, tell him I sent you. All right, let's go. Till next time. Bye. Oh, I, I got to load my outro. I don't even have an outro loaded. Mm. It's rookie night at the Apollo. Um. All right. Bye.